see, here's the thing. No one's preventing you from living like a socialist. You can go do that. But your, your, your worldview would prevent me from living like an entrepreneur or like a capitalist. So inherently, your ideology is built on control of other people's choices. Today, we're going to be checking out master student learns how bad socialism can really get. Guys, I'm really sure Charles Gay had to school him because I need to believe that a society or a country needs capitalism and socialism to work. Like, you need the both. Like, you can't just say you want to go with one. Like, you need the both. But guys, let's get straight into this. I know, I've seen the uh, socialism side, so. Yeah, well, I, I don't like your ideology. I don't know about oh, you. You seem like a nice enough person. Yeah. Your ideas are practically evil, but that's okay. No, no, same for you. Okay, tell me why. What? Tell me why. Capitalism is a vampire. I don't know. Is don't... it what? I said that capitalism is a dead vampire that feeds on the blood of the working mm. class. Capitalism is a deadly vampire that feasts on the blood of the working class. Yeah. Can you elaborate on that for me? Um, I don't really want to right now, but like, because like, do you, do you have an, do you have an iPhone? I was, yeah. So you're you're feasting on the blood of the working class. How dare you? Yeah. I know. How do you feel about that? We um, all have to do the best that we can. Uh, no, you don't. Why, why don't you go live on a farm and not use the fruits of the working class and just be a socialist with your friends? Why, why use the fruits of the free market? Isn't that kind of hypocritical? No, because the free market is so pervasive, we have like no choice but to eat. No, like I said, you can go live on a farm by yourself like the Amish do or like socialists in Vermont do, but yet you choose to live in a free market society and benefit from it and use the heat and the light and the well-being and the medicine and the food all as a byproduct of a market-based society. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love it. But... Oh, you love it, but you said it's a vampire sucking the blood of the working class, so isn't that a little contradictory? What? What's your dad's opinion? My dad's opinion? Yeah, how old are you? I'm 18. Uh, what, what's, your, what's your dad the same persuasion as you? No. You no might, he's, think... he's a Republican. Slightly, that's a good one. He's... He's Republican. Yeah, he's a Republican. Do, but no one's preventing... See, here's the thing. No one's preventing you from living like a socialist. You can go do that. But your, your, your worldview would prevent me from living like an entrepreneur or like a capitalist. So inherently, your ideology is built on control of other people's choices. Ours is built on freedom. If you want to go live like a socialist, I have no problem with that. You can go start your own socialist colony in rural Utah, buy your own land and share your own water and share your own food. That's what's so amazing about voluntary societies, whereas what you talk about is a coercive society. I don't have that freedom to live how I want to live under the worldview that you espouse. And I think that's immoral. You're forcing them. And again, I don't believe in revolutionary socialism. I, believe I didn't that. accuse you of that. You said, okay. you said Democrat believe, socialism. Yeah. Um, that's just the club that I'm with. Really, I'm, I'm fairly Marxist, honestly. Okay, like, we can, let's talk. That's just, that's just the club that I'm in. But... I believe that eventually we will get to a state where enough people, we will collectively come together and say, hey, you know, this is better, you know, for all of us. I don't, I don't, obviously, with the world we live in today, like, socialism can't exist, like, like today in America. Like, I'm, I'm very pragmatic, you know, at, at my core. Okay. I'm like, I recognize that's so, never going to so happen. So, you, you said the Marxist thing. Can you give me an example where Marxism has ever worked? Um, no, but that's because we need a but it's been tried over a hundred times in the last hundred years, and it's never worked. It's an O for a hundred. And isn't that kind of concerning to you? Well, so the thing is, in a, in, in a Marxist state, you know, it's a, um, it's a state for this class, this money, this society. Right, and so that, that's just utopia, man. I mean, that, that's no different than a fiction novel about Neverland. It's, it's been tried, and the results are hundreds of millions of people dead. But, but, that's, but that's ultimately what the true communist yeah. utopia is. Right, so, so here's the question. You think utopia is attainable? I think it is, not in our lifetime. Okay. Have you read the Communist Manifesto? Yeah, and so I, I, I guess the struggle I have here is you espouse a viewpoint that has never worked, you think it's never going to work in our lifetime, and never work in this country. So why do you have it? That's like... no different than me believing in something of a work of fiction. But well, that doesn't mean that you can't work your life. So how would we go about working towards it? That's where the revolutionary component comes in, isn't it? So maybe you are a little more revolutionary than you admit it. I don't think I am. I think that like when you look over time, and you see 
you know, how societies have changed and how they've progressed and everything. I think that eventually will get to why we look at the game to criticize it. Well, so let me ask you a question, question. Do you think some people are better at some things than others? Sure. Okay, yeah. so then in your utopian society, where would a smarter person fit in versus a not so smart person? Would there be hierarchies? Or no, in your fictitious utopian Marxist My society. Fictitious, okay, you gotta be Marxist society. Well, at that point, automation will have taken over enough so that the amount of hype and the amount to what is to Are you familiar with this thinking? No, I'm very familiar. I, I'm the, trying the to deconstruct. Is that to, to no, tr trust me, I'm not, I'm not asking you to figure it out. I'm actually to deconstruct. I, I don't actually think he believes this. I'm saying that, that uh, because of the modern age, there is a new variable, right? Which is automation. Yeah. So very familiar with it. But that, that, that will never get rid of hierarchy. Because so. for, for the 2020 election, there's, uh, what's his name? There's a candidate who believes in the. Uh, yeah, the Asian American guy. Yeah. Very nice. You or something. But here's the thing. That, that are, if we Karl, Karl Marx argued that in the 1870s, and we've had huge automation, and we still have higher ones. Just like, so no matter how hard you try, some people are going to work harder at certain things and be more proficient at them than others, whether it be music, sports, anything. In the fictitious Marxist society, you, it means the complete total abolition of any sort of hierarchy whatsoever. And so that's something you would believe in. Okay, so that's anti how we're actually built as people. Some people are taller, some people are smarter, some people have higher IQ, some people have more drive. Only in a market-based society are those differences able to elevate the standard of living for all people and actually make some sense of a broken world. And there's been so many times that Marx's fictitious utopian con communism has tried to be implemented. Over a short period of time, like the Paris Onion, it falls apart. Do you know why? Because human beings are inherently selfish. And so if you try to build a commune, for example, after 20 days, you're going to have one guy say, no, no, I want two loaves of bread, not one. And he might be smart enough to be able to figure out how to do that. Then all of a sudden, there'll be a small subdivision yeah. that will break away from him and you have conflict. The only reason we have a civil society in the West is in order to get two loaves of bread in the West, you have to earn it. You can't take it away from somebody else. That's where Marxist utopian fictitious communism brings in. This is an interesting time. Thank you. I hope you learned something there. Guys, for me, I honestly believe that life is not fair. And the way most American students these days, like, they want life to be fair. They want, like, it's not going to happen. Like, I can't work 20 hours a day and you work 8 hours a day and you expect us to have the same results. Funny enough, my work 4 hours a day and be more wealthy than I am. And that's it. I feel this life is it's not fair. Like, you might be consistent and... Do everything, and someone might just post a video and blow up. And I honestly believe that this life is not fair. But the only way for you to attain it is for you to actually work hard. Some people are talented, some people are gifted. For me, I believe we need capitalism and socialism for a country to thrive. Like, we need both. You can't just, you cannot just say you need capitalism. I cannot just say you need socialism. I feel you need them. Like, you need to put both of them together and make it work. But I tell you think about this. Like, Educate me in the comment section if you think I'm wrong, but let me know what you think about this. Such a like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time, guys. First.